Good day. In this last video I will walk you through the model itself. I'm going to begin by looking at the actual user interface and go through some of the tabs and the most used commands within the tabs. I'll also look through the definitional policies. Remember those are the policies which set up the structure of the model itself. And then in the next section I will look specifically at the tax policies focusing on income tax and simplified tax only touching briefly on value-added tax and excise duties and then in the final section look at the social benefits in particular the direct social support program and the basic social support program. Okay, so this is the interface. The very first um, tab, if you like, is the tab that we've used before where you actually um, save the country, open the project in the first place and, and sometimes a, a new project, but you won't need that. The ones here that you will need is save country and open project and indeed close country if you want to do that. The next tab, which is countries, has only got Mozambique in it, so it's the only tab. Um, in Euromod itself, all of the countries are put together, and you can select the various countries by clicking on the flag. Here we have just Mozambique. The next tab is display. Now, in display, the one that we use most often is conditional formatting. I mentioned um, in an earlier session that when we make changes to the model, we can switch on conditional formatting so that we can look at the changes between one system and the next. That's um, one of the ones that we most often use. You can actually select to look at a single policy or the full spine, but we actually always look at the full spine because it's not a large and complicated model um, and it's easier to look at it all together. Okay, and that's really all we use in display. Country tools we use more often, add a system I've mentioned, although it's only one way of adding a system, deleting a system I've mentioned. Um, I've also mentioned databases because that's updated automatically um, when you add a new system. Um, the, the, the other important one is uprating indices, which you'll remember I showed you when we looked at the definitional policies um, uh, back in, in, in session two. Um, so here there's the various indices that are used for uprating their names and the values between 2009 and 2015. And here's the capacity to add new years and you also have the capacity to add new um, inflators. And then you can refer in the model itself to the factors um, by uh, referring to their dollar f underscore names, so dollar for uh, uh, um, uh, a factor, dollar f for a factor, underscore, and then whatever the particular factor you're going to be using for uprating is. Okay. Then administration tools, probably the most important administration tool is variables. Um, this is where if you want to create a new variable within the model or indeed within the data set and introduce it to a not, a, a, the model you have to click on the variables um, uh, tool and introduce the new variable name you want to the model um, and it has to be follow the naming convention of uh, Euromod um, which means that a demographic variable must begin with D, labour market will L, etc. And this is not usually needed except when you're building a new data set or if you're developing a new policy and the output variable isn't within the list that's already here and you need to introduce a new output variable. But the good thing is that Euromod gives us an awful lot of output variables already 
in this uh, um, list of accepted variables. So you only rarely need to introduce a new variable in practice. So I'll close the uh, variables window. I think it's the subject of a of a of a, a training session on its own on how to use the variables administration tool. Otherwise, there's no other administration tools that are relevant to us. There are no add-ons that are relevant, and indeed, in terms of application, the most useful is open output file in Excel. If you have to have Excel on your machine, but if you click on that, then it loads up, or gives you the opportunity, I should say, to load up the most recent output file and it formats it appropriately into Excel and allows you to look at the data in Excel. That's really useful when you're developing a new policy because you can check quite easily and readily um, that it does what it says it's going to do. So for example, if you, as we did in the last exercise, introduce a new child benefit policy um, and award it um, to every child in Mozambique who is 15 years or younger, you can check all the 15 year olds and make sure that the child benefit uh, variable BCH underscore S has the value you expect it to have and that there aren't children under 15 have been excluded and that the amount allocated is correct. So it's a very useful tool, really. Summary um, statistics is also a useful plugin, but it hasn't yet been finalised for the South Mod countries. It really is, at the moment, only uh, usable with the uh, Euro Mod European countries. But during the course of 2017, that will become available. And then there's the help and info. Um, this should be used alongside the uh, user manual uh, which um, we will have produced um, uh, for the training um, but it has a, a help uh, um, key which gives a kind of standard Windows help interface with a search engine and so forth. Okay. That's really the tabs. I'll go back to countries because that's uh, where we normally come in. Um, the, the definitional policies are all preceded by the DEF colon um, and I can go through them. I've talked to some of these before. Uprate. Uprate is used to uprate um, the income, particularly within the um, model itself, income from all sources. And the data set it operates on is, of course, as we know, the EOF 2009, but it has to be specified. The default factor is the factor um, CPI total. Um, employment income, YEM, is and, and self-employment income are both uprated not by CPI but by the general wage inflator. Now expenditure um, is uprated separately. It, it expenditures in this model for VAT and exercise duties but it's uprated by a special uprate policy which I will talk about when we talk about bringing expenditure into the model which in fact is the next um, definitional policy. So I'll close that and open expenditure. Now expenditure is there for VAT. You can see from the comments that we're defining the variables um, containing expenditure variables for VAT uh, uh, um, uh, um, um, purposes and we're defining the path um, for that input data set. It's a separate data set. It's constructed from the EOF but it's imported separately into the model. And it's a very detailed data set because it contains all of the separate expenditure items in the EOF. So that the variables that are defined all begin with an X 
um, for expenditure, but the following um, uh, uh, digits refer to the what's called the Koikop code, which is a code for a particular thing. So um, 011112 is rice grain, etc. And, it, and, and all of them are separately there. Um, I think it's several hundred. I can't remember the exact number. Well, we can go down and look. Um, there you go. It's um, it's nine hundred ninety-one actually. Different separate items are detailed in the expenditure um, file, and therefore have to have variables defined. We could have put all. 900 plus variables in to the model using the variables tool but it's a very laborious way of doing it this is a, a quicker way of doing it because we can define the variables within the policy uh, expenditure itself and then we can import the variables um, this uses the path that's the file um, within that path and that's how the expenditure file needs to be merged by id person then we can define income lists for uprating. So first of all we can uprate food because we know that's separate and then we list all of those items again that we those 900 items and we put a plus alongside all of the food items to indicate in this income list um, expenditure uprate 01 that they are to be included in the income list. Now remember when we talked about income lists, income lists are like compound variables that are aggregates of, of the variables that are listed here with a plus alongside them. If they're not to be included, there's a not applicable on in the side of them. So we've put all 900 here, but only pluses against the food items, because we're uprating food, which is the, in income list uprate 01, separately from non-food. And then non-food is income list 02, where all the food items have not applicable, but all the non-food items have a plus. So what we've ended up with is uh, two income lists, one for uprating food, one, one comprising of food variables for uprating with a food uh, um, inflator, and one comprising of um, non-food items for uprating by the uh, CPI excluding food. And then to actually do the uprating itself, we have this little teeny um, uh, uh, um, function called ilvar op, where you take an income list, in this case it's the food one, and you specify the operand, I'll cancel that, um, which is the food operand, and then you specify the action on the operand which is multiply so basically that that means multiply the expenditure by the food index and then the non-food one is exactly the same okay I think that will be clear when you go through it yourselves the excise expenditure is very similar we define variables but much fewer, just the excise on spirit, uh, cigars, tobacco, beer, wine, petrol, because of the petrol tax. But here we introduce variables not just on expenditure, which are the first um, 11, but also on um, quantity in respect to petrol and diesel. That's because the excise duty, um, or fuel duty to be precise, for diesel and petrol is on a quantity, not on expenditure. Again, you define an input path and uh, a merging variable and the, and, the, and the data set itself. And then different income lists, three really, one for operating um, alcoholic beverages, that's 03. One for uprating um, sorry, let me just get this right. One for uprating 
alcoholic beverages, one for uprating um, tobacco, and one for uprating fuel. And you'll see what we've got. We've got the whole list for all of them, um, but we've got pluses against the alcoholic beverages in uprate 03. We've got the pluses against tobacco products for uprate 4, and we've got the pluses against fuel for uprate 5. And then again, if I can close those up now, then we have the uprater Ilvar op operation multiplying the uh, alcohol expenditure by the alcohol CPI and exactly the same for tobacco and fuel. Okay. Okay, the next definitional policy that we need to consider are income lists. Income lists are actually income concepts and hence the title here. Um, there are a number of income lists that are standard income lists. These are income lists that Euromod expects to be defined. Um, these are income lists such as disposable income, earnings, simulated benefits, etc. And there are some income lists such as the taxable income income lists, which I'll show you in a second, that are specific to MOSMOD and aren't general across models. Um, to distinguish the two, and I'm going to show you one of the tax income lists, um, the prefix IL underscore taxably 01. The IL underscore indicates that this is a MOSMOD specific income list. The standard income list, so I was going to show you, for example, disposable income, um, are prefixed by ILS underscore. In other words, income list standard underscore, um, as opposed to um, just income list. Now, these income lists, you'll recall we've come across them when we actually went through the different PowerPoints, but they are basically uh, composite variables is one way you could think of it. So, for example, this income list taxably 01 contains other income, yacht, that's why there's a plus sign. It doesn't contain employment income, so there's a not applicable by that. Um, it does contain income from property. Um, it doesn't contain property uh, uh, um, land, because that's not applicable and it's not taxable in Mozambique. It does contain agriculture, income from ag agriculture, self-employed income and income from inter interest. So they've all got a plus alongside of them. That means that they're included in that, if you like, composite variable EOL taxably 01. So they're added together. The things with not applicable beside them are just not added in. If there was a minus alongside of it, um, then those things would be subtracted. So if we look at the disposable income, that consists of original income, um, which itself is um, defined by an income list higher up, plus benefit income, but subtracted, that's, that's why there's a minus, um, um, taxes and social insurance contributions. So basically pluses add an income source to that um, composite variable called the income list, Minuses subtract things from the total and not applicable simply doesn't, don't include them. So obviously you can go through every one of these income lists to understand them. The 
when we actually look at the policies, uh, in particular the tax policies, um, you'll see that um, where, where and how EOL taxably O1 is used, um, that's used in personal income tax for non-employment income if no simplified tax is payable. Good to make a note in comments as to just how things are used. And then there's ill taxably 2 if I'm not mistaken. Yes, ill taxably 02. This has, um, still doesn't have any YEM in it, um, but it also doesn't have self-employment income in it. Um, this is YSE. Um, and this is used for non-employment income if simplified tax is payable. So it's uh, you distinguish um, um, th between the two because the O1 has uh, self-employment income in it and that's where there's no simplified tax. Um, but this second list doesn't have self-employment income because this is a case where actually self-employment is dealt with by turnover tax. They're just different income concepts. And it's not worth um, uh, uh, um, going through all of them, but I can give you another one by looking at simplified tax. That's got um, self-employment turnover and agricultural turnover as the two items in it. Um, OK, and then there are special income lists for the, um, the direct social support programme and the basic social support programme means tests. And there are particular items of income that are taken into account in those means tests. We'll get to the means tests later, but um, just when we do get to those um, particular uh, means tests, the, what will be referred to is IL underscore DSA, and that will mean uh, YEM, income from employment, other income, agricultural income, self-employed income, contributory pension and survivor pension, all added together. So it's, a, it's, it's like, a, as I said, a composite variable. I think that's probably enough on income lists. They're a very useful concept. They're, they're if you like, you know, defining these almost super variables, you might call them. There is actually one or two down the bottom, no, there are several down the bottom, which are uh, income lists for different VAT um, uh, expenditures, um, and they're used in the VAT policy. Actually, in this um, initial training, we're not going into indirect taxes because it's quite complex, but the income lists are a very important part of dealing with VAT and excise duty. So I hope that's all okay. I'll just minimise, in fact I'll, I'll minimise all uh, policies so that we've got back to our spine. So that's income lists dealt with. Um, the next um, definitional policy is the tax unit. These are actually quite complicated. They usually don't require altering, as I, as I again said during an earlier presentation. However, they do have to be set up for each um, model and they define the what might, one might call the unit of assessment um, for different taxes or benefits. Um, the simplest to understand, I guess, is the household, as that's all members of the household belonging to, to one unit. That's what it is, the definition of the household um, tax unit. The, um, there's, a, there's a dependent child condition here, um, which is that um, children have to be, obviously, zero or over um, and less than 18, in other words less than or equal to 17. Okay, that's how we define the household tax unit. That's straightforward. The other straightforward one is the individual. That's simply one member of the household. Each individual member forms its own unit. It doesn't matter whether they're an adult or a child. Remember these tax units are compulsory parameters 
in each tax or benefit policy. Um, and, and we talked about that um, in, 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 in the, the last couple of sessions. So those are the individual and the household. Um, the couple is, is also used, um, and couple is a subgroup of um, uh, uh, um, the household. Anything that's a subgroup of the household except individual um, is, has to have the type subgroup alongside them. Obviously individual is a subgroup of a household, but it, that's an exception to, to that rule. It's, uh, um, any other subgroups of a household have to have the word subgroup um, uh, uh, um, and and their type uh, written along uh, 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 subgroup written alongside type um, and the members are just simply uh, the person and their partner so the members is just partner because uh, the 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 individual is taken as given and the partner condition is that they are married and the default is that the um, head. Um, is the partner and the ID is the same as the uh, um, head of household so okay so those are the straightforward ones that's couple individual and household there's actually one other that's used within MOSMOD and it's quite complicated and special and it's, um, it's, it's, we're calling it family. Um, there's, a, there's a common standard definition of family which isn't used in uh, Mozambique in MOSMOD, which is um, a person, their spouse, and any uh, children that they may have. Um, it's not used at the moment in any policy. It may become used in, in, in future times, so we've switched it off. But this tax unit family 2 is used and it's used in the income tax policy and it's a more complicated version um, of uh, a, a, a family because it's a subgroup of household but it's for the individual and their dependent children but their dependent children are much more co uh, complicatedly um, described than simply children under the age of 18. They do include children under the age of 18, that's the first condition, but it can be um, children who are over 18 in, if various circumstances are uh, apply, such as that they've got a low income uh, if they're under 26 and um, uh, so forth. All of these things, um, uh, conditions, are required um, to uh, uh, um, define a dependent child for the purpose of calculating tax liability and we can look at the calculation of tax liability um, a, a little later. Okay so I hope that's enough on tax units. The next definitional policy is constants Again, I think we've touched upon constants during the course of these slides. Constants are um, fixed amounts that, uh, you know, there can be amounts, there can be rates, um, and if they're amounts, um, the default um, uh, periodicity is monthly. Um, however, if it's going to be yearly, then you have to put a hash Y to distinguish it as being yearly. It's also good practice if they're monthly to put a hash M alongside them. Now, not every constant within uh, MOSMOD has actually been put into a constant policy. There are, for example, different rates of taxation which haven't yet been put into constants. Now, um, you could argue that that's something that ought to be done and um, I think in, as this model develops more and more um, uh, of these uh, um, amounts and rates will actually go into the constant definition. But how constant definitions work is that there's a function def const 
Um, and this function actually can be put into any policy, so you, you could put the relevant constants at the beginning of the policy in question, or you can group them all together at the beginning. The manual talks about this uh, a lot, the accompanying manual. But here we are, we've, we've defined our constants all under a constant definition policy. And there's, here's one, which is the uh, non-taxable minimum amount, um, which um, applies to um, certain types of personal income tax. Um, and that's 22,005, sorry, 225,000 metacals per year. And then there are the different rates for um, excise duty and VAT. And those are all with, that we've currently put into constants. As we go down through the model, I'll indicate other things that could have been put into constants. And, and, and as I said, maybe will be in due course. So that's the constants. I'm tempted to go do next the final definitional policy that's applicable here um, before moving to the tax policies and then finally the benefit policies. Um, so if I can, I'm going to do this um, final definition and policy and that's the standard output individual level. We, we, we have turned off the household level of standard output. So we're only outputting individual level data with MosMod. And what are we sending to um, the output file? Well, the variables that we send to the output file, which you remember is a text file, um, are all um, defined in this output file. If it it's not they're not defined in this output um, sorry policy if they're not defined in this output policy in this function then they don't get um, sent out of the model so anything that's in the input data set that you want in the output data set has to be specified in the output policy similarly any new simulated variables that have been created during the course of uh, running the model uh, also need to be specified if they're to appear in the output uh, file. However, we do this in a quite a comprehensive way. First of all, file, that's the um, actual name of the output file. So the output file would be called mz underscore 2015 underscore std dot txt. Um, that's for the, um, on this particular system, um, if it's a, a, a new system, that would be, of course, uh, changed to the new system. And then what we do is export a lot of groups of variables. And the advantage of outputting groups of variables is that you don't have to specify in a long list all of the variables you want um, outputting. So, for example, um, by outputting ID asterisk as a group, you will get um, all of the variables beginning with ID. And you may remember that in the input data set, there are lots of variables that begin with ID. For example, the ID HH, the um, identity of the household, ID person, for the identity of the person, uh, ID partner, ID parent, all sorts. And these uh, identification variables can be put out by using ID and then an asterisk. That will is operate as a wild card and will output all of those variables. They, they, they all actually came from the input data set, so they're straight out again. Ditto with the demographic variables, D star, labour market variables, L star, all the income variables, Y star, etc. Benefits, B star. Um, now... There are benefits that are simulated, and they will come out as well as any benefits that were in the in, in, in input data set, providing they begin with B. Ditto with taxes for T. Um, so, all very straightforward, um, and if you want to output all of the separate components of an income list, you could put def eel and then eels dispy and that will output the separate components of disposable income. Um, if you want to dispose 
uh, sorry, output the actual um, total of an income list. You express it in, in this way here with IL star and ILS star. Okay, and you can also output um, uh, information on a tax unit as well as some of the inbuilt queries. And then here we specifically for checking wanted to output certain of the expenditure variables but not all so we didn't do var group x star we only did the few variables that we needed to check and they're historically still there they could be deleted now okay that really um, concludes all of the definitional policies because now we come to um, two groups basically of policies the tax policies and I'm going to look at income tax um, turnover tax which is sometimes called simplified tax um, and I'll include in this also the social insurance contributions um, but I'm not going to talk about um, excise duty fuel tax and value added tax these indirect taxes on this occasion. So I'm going to focus simply on income taxes. Okay, income tax. We're going to start with the straightforward income tax relating to people in paid employment as opposed to people who are self-employed and in fact I think we're going to focus on this one because the same principles apply to the other income tax which is payable for people certain people in self-employment and on other income so because it's quite complicated um, it's better to focus on the principles of just the one so let's look at income tax for people with PAYE um, income. Okay, so first of all, you'll see that there is a, a, a variable definition a function at the very beginning, which is straightforward. It just um, simply uh, produces two intermediate variables. The it's actually the amount of uh, basic PAYE income tax and hence it's called I underscore basic underscore PAYE underscore income tax and then the dependents income tax. Now as you'll be aware the Mozambican tax system um, calculates a basic amount dependent on what your um, uh, monthly or annual income is um, and it puts you into a particular band and uh, depending on what band it puts you in um, you can calculate the amount of basic tax payable. Then there is a supplement um, which is payable if you have no dependent children and those and, and other dependents and those were defined remember in that tax unit family too so a supplement if you've got no no dependents but that supplement is reduced if you do have dependents and indeed extinguished in in some cases so so there are two parts to this first of all the calculation of the basic income tax and then the calculation of any additional income tax based on the presence or absence of dependents. Okay, so that's why there are these two variables, basic income tax and uh, income tax um, uh, um, in respect of dependents or absence of dependents. Okay, then you'll see that there are a number of Ben Calcs. The first one is all that's required to calculate the basic income tax. But then the subsequent um, Ben Calcs are all in respect of calculating the amount of additional income tax payable 
um, which depends on the band you fall in in the first calculation and depends on how many dependents you've got. So let's just look at the basic calculation first of all. Looks complicated but it's actually fairly straightforward. We're only considering employment income YEM and you simply have to go through looking so to speak at where your monthly income falls. So if your um, monthly income is between 20,249 and 20,749.99 then you're in tax band 2. If your income is um, uh, over um, 144,749.99 a month you're in tax band 10, the highest. And then if you're somewhere else, you're in one of these other bands um, between band 2 and band 10. Okay, so that's straightforward. So just say that you your income um, is, let's, 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 let, let's put it so that one's like in the middle here somewhere, um, your income is between 22,000 249.99 and 32,749.99. In other words, you have an income of 32,000. Okay? If you've got an income of 32,000 per month, you go straight into um, uh, uh, um, tax band 7, actually, it is. That's mistakenly reading across so that you're in tax band 7. This is because you you wouldn't comply with any of the other conditions. The you know comp con for the first um, uh, um, eligibility condition or liability condition is that your income's got to be greater than twenty two twenty thousand two hundred forty nine ninety nine and less than twenty thousand seven hundred forty nine ninety nine. Yours isn't. Yours isn't. It's thirty thousand. So you're not in band two. You're not in band three, you're not in band four, you're not in band five, um, you're not in band six, but you are in band seven. Your income falls neatly within band seven. So your basic income tax is calculated by taking your income, 30,000, subtracting the base amount, which is for this particular band is 22,000. 249.99 and then multiplying the difference by 0.15 which is 15%. So that's how you calculate the basic income tax liability and that's how you uh, program it. Clearly the lower limit is zero, you, you can't pay less than zero. And the output variable is I underscore basic underscore PAYE underscore income tax okay so that's that but remember this particular person was in um, band 7 because they had their income of 30,000 so we must now um, look at band 7 here because these different Ben calcs only apply um, sorry not, not that one these are different Ben calcs um, from 7.3 onwards um, are ex mutually exclusive. So we already know that, that, that our particular person we're considering is not in band 3. Um, there are no deductions, uh, no increases in taxes if you're in a, an earlier band. Um, in other words, not in band 2. So band three, you have to be at least in band three to incur these extra taxes in regard to um, absence of dependents. So, but our particular person is in band seven, and we'll just open that Ben Calc and have a look at it because it's quite complicated. And I've picked one deliberately that um, will explain the principles of this. So first of all, um, within the family, the person has to have the biggest uh, uh, income. So hash val is yem, so it's income we're looking at. 
has max val in tax unit and the tax unit we're looking at is these families so we're looking for that person and that person's yen has got to be greater than 22,249.99 um, but less than or equal to 32,749.99 which is us the one we looked at earlier so that's fine and if the number of dependents in that tax unit, in your tax unit, um, that is the family, is zero, then the amount of additional tax is 200 metacals per month. So it's a 200 metacals per month extra. And then as you have more dependents, so if your dependents are one, then you pay 150. Um, dependents are uh, two, 125, three, 100. But if it's four or more dependents, then it's only 50. So the more dependents you have, the less additional dependents tax you pay, if you see what I mean. So that's how it works, and that's how that particular uh, um, Ben Calc operates. And then each one operates in a similar way. You have to work through each one. They'll be exactly the same as the band seven that we looked, to, looked at. Um, and then the final um, Arathop simply adds together the basic income tax plus the dependent supplement and puts it into the output variable tin underscore s. Very straightforward when you think about it and understand the way in which taxes are calculated in Mozambique. For um, moving on, I'd also like to briefly mention the simplified tax, which is the turnover tax. Okay. Um, Turnover tax is a tax, um, or simplified tax, it's a tax that's common to most developing countries and it's a way of taxing small traders um, in the informal economy particularly um, who are not required to take and keep annual accounts. Um, and so they're normally, as you know, with... Um, uh, um, self-employment, you pay tax on the um, your sales less the cost of purchasing your raw materials etc. So it's on the difference between the amount of sales and the expenditure that you make in order to make those sales. The difference is profit and you pay tax on the profit. Um, well, small traders don't uh, usually keep very detailed books and if you don't keep detailed books there is this simplified tax that can be payable. In order to qualify for simplified tax though um, you must have income from turnover and that was specified in the income list uh, that we talked about earlier of less than, now I always get this wrong, 2.5 million metacals per year. So if you've got a turnover, remember it's a turnover, of 2.5 million metacals a year, then you will pay um, simplified tax um, at the rate of only 3%, because you're paying it on the whole turnover. So it's a straightforward and reasonably easy um, calculation. Okay. Um, I said I wasn't going to look at the... Um, uh, other income tax, but it is it's in a simple uh, excuse me similar process um, to the income tax for PAYE um, in the sense that there are um, these two components of basic tax and then um, the dependent adjustment. So I'll let you go through that one on your own. I did mention, however, that I would mention the social insurance contributions. First of all, private sector and self-employed and then public sector. Private sector and self-employed has 
if you like, three bone calcs, one for each um, uh, type of person. Um, the, this uses the fact that you've got to have employment income, so YEM has got to be greater than zero, and LES01, that's a labour market um, sector variable, that means that you are in the private sector if LES01 equals one, that was constructed in the data set. Then the employee contribution is 3%, and that's put into that variable, TSCE e underscore S. Um, and then the employer contribution is 4% with the same criteria, and that's put into TSCER for employer as opposed to employee underscore S. Again, these are at the individual level. And then finally, self-employed. Um, for self-employed, you've got to have um, self-employment income and not turnover tax. So YSE has got to be greater than zero and uh, turnover tax, simplified tax equals zero, then it's 7% and that's all played by the self-employed person obviously. So I'll close those and then finally if we look at this policy 601 underscore MZ, again a single Ben Calc. this is for employees in the public sector and this is with LES02 equal 1, that's a public sector employee but with um, YEM, this time it's the employment income is it's 7% of employment income which is the contribution by employee and there's no employer uh, 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 contribution and it goes into this variable TSCEE02 underscore S. Right, okay, that takes us through all of the definitional policies, as much of the tax policies as I want to go through on this occasion. So it leaves just the um, two um, social benefit policies, which is the um, direct social support programme and the basic social su uh, support programme. Okay, to finish off the walkthrough of the model, bearing in mind that we're not going to look at excise duties and other indirect taxes. Um, we're going to now look at the two policies that relate to social benefits, and that's the direct social support program, um, which is the provision of food boxes for a temporary period of time, and the basic social support program, which is um, a cash allocation to certain beneficiaries. If we could take, first of all, the um, direct social support program, which is BOT underscore MZ, um, you'll see that it's got a number of um, uh, um, functions, um, and it's important that we go through them logically because I think then you'll see how they all fit together. As with the income tax, there's a defining some temporary variables is, is the first step. And then there are a series of eligibility criteria um, because there are various eligibility criteria for food boxes um, and one or more of these has to be fulfilled. Um, they include different kinds of people within the household, also a different um, household income and also an individual level means test, all of that which has to be complied with um, before um, the food box can be allocated. And then the food box has to be allocated according to household size. So that's how it all works um, and how we do it within the model is as follows. So, okay, we'll move to that. Um, 
We set up a series of temporary variables again, which will be used during the course of the policy. This is I underscore child underscore headed, child headed household. I underscore bedridden for someone with chronic and degenerative diseases in bedridden condition. I underscore malnutrition, children with acute malnutrition. I underscore incapacity for work, temporary incapacity for work. I underscore below individual means test, this means that uh, um, a person, a particular person is below the means test of the individual. And then a temporary variable called per capita income, because that's how the next thing is calculated, which is the household means test, you need a per capita income first. And then there is a, a, a temporary variable um, called um, below household means test. And then finally, um, there's a temporary variable which is set if the household qualifies for um, a food box. Okay. So those are the definitional variables. I'll close that function up before opening the next. The next are a series of straightforward eligibility functions and they set these output variables which are intermediate variables which I just talked about. So for example, child headed household is the head of the tax unit is the person the head of the tax unit. So that's got um, a level attached to it, hash one, so um, and the tax unit's uh, the household. So is the person the head of the household? Um, so that level goes with that, is head of TU, is head of household. And are there, uh, is their age greater than 11 but less than 18, a child? So if those two conditions are fulfilled, that person is a child-headed household. And this I underscore child underscore headed uh, temporary variable gets given the value of 1 because it is a child-headed household. They all work like that, the eligibility conditions. So the next one is, is it a person with a chronic and degenerative uh, illness? Well, in the data, we actually um, constructed a special variable that looked at um, people who would be, um, um, so to speak, bedridden. And it's called DDI01, and if it's if a person is bedridden, they get the value of 1. So, and that goes into the variable I underscore bedridden. So that's at individual level, this is at individual level. These are all individual, these first conditions. Um, next one, is it a child um, I under 5? the child under five, age greater than equal to naught, and age less than five, and who ha suffer from acute malnutrition. That's another variable from the input data set, DDI02, and that gets that's a value of one in the original data set if the child has ac acute malnutrition. And if that complies, then I underscore malnutrition will get the value of one. Similarly, there is um, a temporary incapacity for work flag in the original data set, DDIHM equals 1. That would qualify a person to be included by virtue of temporary incapacity for work. Um, and that's, that is set to 1 in the data set if all working age adults in the household are temporary disabled. And that goes into the I underscore incapacity for work temporary variable. Then we get to the means test of the individual. Is the individual below the uh, individual means test? Well the individual means test is if that income, remember the DSA income list which is the income for this particular um, uh, benefit, the, 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 the um, direct social support program, if that total income is less than a thousand metacals a month, then that person qualifies, so that person is below the individual means test. Then there's also a household means test uh, uh, qualification. So this time we look at the 
income um, list again. This is a simple uh, arithot this time because we want to get the per capita. Uh, we want to get the total household income, which um, is we take in the income list of the um, income and um, that's at individual level, output it at household level into this variable YMN01 underscore S and that will, this arithop, because it's at the household level, will add up all of the IL underscore DSAs of the individuals within the household and place them within the variable YMN01 underscore S. So means tested income variable. Okay, the next arithop simply calculates the household income by taking the, uh, sorry, the per capita income by taking the household income and dividing it by the number of people in the household, n purse in units, one of those queries that uh, Euromod provide us with, which is the number of people in the household. And then we get the uh, per capita income in the household um, allocated. And then the household means test is the per capita income in the household less than a thousand per month and if so then the I below HH means test is given as a one and then finally there's a final eligibility to check whether um, the um, households contain one or more eligible people and here that has to be either a child-headed household or bedridden or um, uh, um, uh, children with acute malnutrition or with all adults temporarily incapable of work and so they've got to be one of those um, what is it four categories and below the individual test means test and below the household means test. If all of that is um, correct, then they will qualify for a food box, the household will. And that will, the, the, the output variable I underscore qualifies for BOT will be set to one. In other words, it's a household that qualifies. Um, and, uh, and individuals within the household will be given that um, value. And then the final, final one is that we then calculate the amount of the food box depending on household size. Um, and, and we actually put this as a, a, a cash metacal per month amount which are the average values of the food boxes across the provinces in Mozambique for 2015. There are, of course, variation um, uh, across um, Mozambique, but this is the average. So, basically, the, the, the eligibility condition, it, they've got to have qualified for the food box at the individual level, someone in the household has to and if there's just one person in the unit then the amount allocated is 630 ditto um, you, you look for this if there are um, two or three people in the household in which case you get 1390 and then uh, four or more in which case you get 2385 metacals. And then the amount is put into um, the variable um, bot underscore s, which then goes into the output file. So it's quite complicated, but um, at one level, but, but also quite straightforward. OK, I'm going to close up all of that. because that takes us to the basic um, uh, um, social support programme which is called BSADI underscore MZ because that's what um, the output um, uh, variable is called but it's basic 
SSP. Again, we make the flags. This time it's elderly with permanent incapacity for work, living alone or heading a family in need of support, or uh, people with chronic and degenerative diseases but not bedridden. Okay, then there's ones on the uh, in, uh, intermediate variables for the means test at the individual level, the per capita household income, the means test at the household level, and qualifying for BSADI. Exactly the same shape and structure of the policy as with the BOT underscore MZ um, and similar um, uh, functions. So those are the variables we've defined. I'll, I'll close that down. And first of all, an eligibility condition that uh, checks on uh, that the person is elderly with permanent incapacity for work. So, um, first of all, um, I've got to... Uh, um, look at this condition very carefully because remember each individual condition is within the curly brackets but the, they're shaped by the um, round brackets too so first condition is age greater than or equal to 55 and and then age greater than or equal to 60 and male. So, okay, so it's got to be either a male, uh, sorry, a female over the age of 55, or a male over the age of 60, okay? And the disability flag must be set to one, and they've got to be the head of the household. If that's ca the case, then there, uh, the elderly plus variable is set to one. Next possible um, qualification for the basic um, social support program is individuals with chronic and degenerative diseases but not bedridden. So we have a special disability flag for that which is DDIO4 equals one and that is the people who are with chronic and degenerative illness but not bedridden that was set in the in the in the in the um, beta the data underpinning data set but the person has got to be not a child so over 18 and head of the uh, tax unit head of the household and as I said with a uh, chronic and degenerative disease but not bedridden. If all of that's the case then I degenerative is set to one. Okay and then there's an individual level means test which is exactly the same as it was for the um, direct um, SSP and the person has to qualify for that. There's then a calculation in the same way of household income as it was for the um, um, direct social support program. Similarly a per capita income in the same way and then finally um, uh, a test if the per capita income is less than a thousand metacals a month then the um, output variable uh, I underscore MT test underscore HH underscore BSADI is then set to one and then there's the eligibility criteria at the very end which is again very similar to the one for the um, uh, direct social support program so it's got to be somebody who is um, uh, elderly with permanent incapacity for work which is that first one or bedridden, um, sorry, degenerative illness, but not bedridden, um, and individual means test has got to be passed, and the household means test has got to be passed. And then that person qualifies for the um, 
basic social support program. And then the final Ben Calp, very similar to the one before, depending on the number of people in the household, the amount is um, uh, ranges from 310 metacals a month to 610 metacals a month. And that's really all there is to it. So another really quite straightforward policy um, and that really completes the benefit policies um, and indeed um, completes this particular walkthrough of the whole of MOSMOD. Um, I thank you.